What is up, Reds? I hope you're all keeping well. You are very welcome along to tonight's Late Night Agenda. It is Monday and we are live. It is a pleasure to be on here as always, folks. I hope you're keeping well. I know it's probably going to be a little bit quieter tonight because Frank Lampard's Chelsea are in action and we all want to check out the competition. But this is how dedicated I am, folks. I'm here. I don't care about Frankie Lampard and Chelsea. I'm here to talk about the Reds with you good people and I hope that you're all doing well. Thank you for those that have joined us tonight in the chat. Lovely to see your comments before the stream starts. I hope you're all keeping well. Right, look, on this day back in 1964, the Reds played their first ever European game. Uh, we beat K.R. Reykjavik from Iceland 6-1. And of course, all this information usually we nick from, from various sites. But for stuff like this, there's only one go-to, and that is lfchistory.net. So yeah, today in 1964, the Reds played their first ever European game, as I said, winning 6-1 against the Icelandic side K.R. Reykjavik. So good. Uh, well done. Congratulations. That was the start of things to come. There we go. Who was to know a few years down the line, quite a few years down the line, we'd be sitting here six European Cups, the better off. I love it. I love the European Cup. So there you go. Right, ladies and gentlemen, loads of stuff to get through. We've got some transfer talk. We'll be talking about Brewster. Of course, we'll be talking about Thiago because this is the never-ending saga. We'll be talking about uh, Marco Grujic as well and a few other bits and pieces in between. How are you? Everyone in the chat, lovely to see you in. I'm going to get through this as quick as I can tonight because I know you guys have places to be. So, uh, well, do we actually, are we allowed to go anywhere? I don't know anymore. I give up. But I'm here. I'm with you. That's all that matters to me. I hope you're all well, folks. But look, let's start with a centre-back option that Liverpool are apparently looking at. But then again, the club are saying that this guy isn't for sale. So let's just go through. I'll have a little chat about it. We'll go from there. Schalke's young centre-back, Ozan Kabak, is somebody that a couple of you guys have asked me about on the stream before. And I've been very honest and said I've never heard of the guy. But I did do my research for you guys, as always. And today, though, a story came out that follows on from a report in Build last month that claimed that Liverpool and Leicester City were both interested in signing the guy. It's no secret that we are short in the centre-back area. You know that. We need a fourth-choice centre-back. But Schalke's sporting director has come out publicly to say that he's not for sale. This is what he had to say. Last year, we managed to sign Ozan, who's one of the biggest talents in Europe in this position, and we're extremely happy about that. Ozan's a great player and a wonderful person. We're delighted to have him with us. Our fans can be reassured Ozan will not leave. So there you go. It's looking like that's another option that maybe we can just chalk off and keep looking. Keep looking, folks. I know, look, if it was me, I'd be going for up a Mercado from Leipzig if money wasn't an option. But unfortunately, we see or an, uh, an object, excuse me. But we do know that uh, money is a problem in this window for the Reds and we're probably going to have to shift a couple of people on. As always, I take time to read your comments before the stream and... There's nothing that turns Liverpool fans on each other more than the transfer window. It seems to just get us all, I don't know, a little bit irked, a little bit outside our normal sense of calmness. And uh, I was reading your comments and it, it's interesting to see who people trust with regards to transfer speculation because the truth is everybody's kind of guessing at it. I mean, even we're talking about the Ferrizio Romanos, we're talking about James... Everybody's kind of guessing because the club are very good these days in keeping their cards close to their chest. That's why I've never come on here and guaranteed anything. But I did guarantee you guys something, or as close to guaranteeing it as I could, and I'm going to talk about that later on, and that is about Thiago. Something that I've been saying to you guys for, I don't know, a couple of weeks now seems to be coming to fruition and becoming public knowledge, and it gives me a little bit of, a little bit of pride that I said this a while ago. It's nice to see that we do get some things right from time to time. Is Salah going to Barcelona? Is Salah going to Barcelona? What do you think? Of course he's not going to Barcelona. We touched on this last night. It was a Dutch agent who's really good friends with Ronald Koeman, who I think played for Ajax back in the day as well. And he came out and said that Koeman wants Salah. Salah wants to go to Barcelona. I don't know where he got the information from that Salah wants to go to Barcelona, but we all know that it's pie-in-the-sky stuff because Mohamed Salah, one, isn't available for sale, and two, is not going to go to Barcelona, who are a bit of a shambles at the minute. And look, how could they afford him? They had to pull out a deal for Latoura Martinez because Inter wouldn't budge and Barca hadn't got the money, hence them looking at Memphis to buy. Now, do you think they're really going to go from Memphis to buy to Mohamed Salah? That's, you know, that's a big jump in finances, and we're not going to sell him at simple as that so don't worry about Mo. Mo's staying where he is. Mo's a red at least for the next season anyway and then look we'll take it from there but I can guarantee you guys Mohamed Salah is going nowhere before this transfer window closes so don't buy into the hype. Don't buy into all the Barcelona rumours and nonsense. It's not going to happen. Um, right, I can't see us retaining the title this season, said Paul Nichols. One big injury to Mane and Salah, and we're fooked. Uh, Firmino being uh, terrible for months now. I'm kind of changing Paul's words a little bit there. He's been a little bit more harsh than I have. Um, look, 
it's always going to be difficult to retain the title, Paul. Whoever we're up against. Manchester City have strengthened. Chelsea, of course, have strengthened. United are strengthening. And you know, there's still time for us to strengthen. Um, we discussed the whole Firmino thing last night. Or Firmino. I keep saying EO at the end of Firmino. I'm getting drawn into that little bad habit. I have to stop it. And um, We talked about that last night. And everybody knows I'll defend Bobby to the last. But even I have to admit, he kind of does need to up his goal scoring a little bit if he's to... Uh, if he's to remain on the pedestal that I've certainly put him on anyway, and there's no doubt in that he wasn't that impressive um, against Leeds in the first game of the season. Salah stole the show, obviously, but, you know, I'm still going to back Bobby, but I understand why people are starting to have doubts. What I will say is, I think we're going to have to just stick with Bobby because it doesn't look like we're going to be getting somebody to play through the centre in this window. There was a good shout from someone last night, though, that suggested maybe we go with Mo through the middle. And that is possible if we do go out and add another wide forward, which it looks like we're going to try and do before the window closes. I have a very strong suspicion now that that forward is going to be Sar from Watford. Again, please don't think that I've got any inside information. I don't. I'm just piecing together a few little bits from articles, from him not playing, and a few other things in between. Uh, Car- Oh, Kent Coastal Holiday Let's, how are you? So I just watched your stream yesterday. You know Firmino frustrates me. It's how uh, he mucks the simple things up. No doubt he's a quality player. And he does, Carl. He does. He does the brilliant stuff. And then you'll see him misplace a five-yard square pass or a little flick around the corner or a one-on-one with the keeper where all he had to do was basically connect with his right foot and the ball was going in. Um, so yeah, and you have been saying it to me for a while, Carl. And I did put my hands up on last night's stream and say... I kind of have been defending Bobby probably a little bit more than I should be, although I do agree that we should be defending most Liverpool players, to be fair, but nobody is above critiquing. I have to be fair about these things. Um, Right, ladies and gentlemen, Marco Grujic. Now, I'm sure you've all seen the quotes coming out from his agent who believes his client has been told he's going to get a chance to prove himself at Liverpool this season. Uh, That's what his agent, Fali Ramadani, has told Kicker anyway in Germany. This is what he said. This is his exact quote. He said, Liverpool want to keep him. That could change in January at the earliest. There you go. Um, Not kind of what we've been hearing, to be fair, from from the journals and the people doing the rounds. Grujic was one of the players listed as being available to be sold. Now, I still think he is available to be sold. The Hearth of Berlin deal didn't come to fruition yet. They couldn't afford the £18 that was part of the loan agreement that we had with them if they wanted to make that deal for Grujic permanent. But look, there are players who are available. Grujic, Wilson, Shakiri. we know they're available. No matter what their agents say, if the right money's put on the table, they're the kinds of players that Liverpool will be looking to move on. Now, just to go back, last night you probably remember that we put up an image and that image showed the homegrown players and it showed the the non-homegrown players. There was a couple of people commenting asking where the likes of Curtis Jones and Brewster was. Because they're under the age of 21, um, they don't have to go on that list. Simple as that. That's where they were missing from the list from. A lot of people thought the list was wrong. It wasn't. It's just that those players don't have to be included because of their age. Um, Ash, welcome to Anfield Agenda FC, buddy. Lovely to have you with us. You've got your red badge now, which means Ash has been a member for six months. Nice one, buddy. If you want to become a member like Ash, you know what to do. Hit the join button in the description or the little blue join button that's beside you. Membership's four ninety nine a month. You know all the usual stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Emojis, blah, blah. You know the stuff by now. You don't need me to sell it to you. Right, what have we got? Bernadette, uh, Craig, it looked like the front three took too many passes and should have been selfish and took their chances. We missed a few sitters to uh, passes for the goal. Yeah, look, there was one instance, Bernadette, where Bobby did something brilliant on the halfway line. Turned, fed the ball to Salah. You probably know the one I'm talking about. Salah and Mane then started playing one-twos with each other. But the last pass to Mane was mistimed, in my opinion, by Salah. Um, it's probably one of the only things he did wrong in the game. He should have held the ball a little bit longer and waited to see if the de- defender committed himself and then he could have played through Mane. But instead, they end up making a hames of it. And look, it doesn't matter. We got the three points. It wasn't a vintage Reds performance, but it was an entertaining game and one that we have to say we enjoyed as Liverpool fans. Uh, a couple of people saying that Werner is a diving git already. <laughs> I love it. I love the way if he had to come to us, we'd have been all lauding him. But now, of course, that he's a Chelsea player, we're all just, just he's a diving git. That's all right. That's what we do. That's the banter, isn't it, as opposition fans? Um, right, what else have we got? Do, 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 do. Thiago time. Oh, Thiago time, ladies and gentlemen. Thiago, Thiago, Thiago. This one's starting to take a bit of a twist and starting to become a little bit clearer. And I don't brag very much on the channel because, hey, 
we probably got nothing to brag about a lot of the time, but I'm going to have a little brag on this one. I have been telling you guys for a long time that I'm very, very doubtful about Manchester United's interest in Thiago. I'd always thought that it just smelled a little bit fishy to me. Didn't really make sense. They got out and got Danny van der Beek. They're looking for a fullback. They're talking with Regulon, I think, from um, Real Madrid, who was on loan at Sevilla. And I think they maybe have another couple of options there that they're looking at. But they have other priorities. We know they want Jadon Sancho. They seem to be struggling with that deal. And now there's perhaps talk of a Gareth Bale loan deal for United. Or even getting Gareth Bale on a free to Manchester United there. Which, uh, you know, that would sit a lot better with me than them going and signing Jadon Sancho. But to get back to Thiago. And this is coming from a Manchester-based journalist, by the way. Somebody who's the uh, chief Manchester United correspondent for the Manchester Evening News. He's confirmed that Manchester United have no intention of moving moving for Bayern Munich's midfielder Thiago Alcantara and are convinced his representative and Bayern Munich are using their name to put pressure on Liverpool to make a bid. There you go. That's kind of what I've... That's the feeling I've had all along from this. Now again, no inside information from my point of view, but that's the feeling that I've had all along from it. So I think I can add to this a little bit. If you want to ratchet it up a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, Skybet have halted betting. They've suspended betting on Liverpool signing Thiago. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. That could mean that a load of Liverpool fans heard about Manchester United's non-interest in Thiago and thought to themselves, now's the time to capitalise and they all probably went and stuck a few quid on Thiago coming to Liverpool. I'm not saying that that's the case. All I'm trying to say here is that it's definitely looking like Manchester United aren't in the picture for Thiago. So what does that leave? That leaves Thiago with two, maybe three options. One, Liverpool get the deal done. I don't know how we're going to get that over the line yet, with Genie looking like he's going to sign a new deal. Uh, we still have to move a few players on, but that's option one. Option two is that he stays at Bayern Munich. He fulfills his contract, leaves at the end of the season, or he stays at Bayern Munich. Maybe signs that extension that they've already offered and he's rejected. Or option three, he ends up at Barcelona. Ronald Koeman doesn't get Genie Wijnaldum, and the board push to get Thiago. They offer the money that Bayern want, or at least they come to an agreement with Bayern. But that hasn't been mentioned much in the media. It has been mentioned that if he leaves on a free at the end of next year, he may sign a pre-contract agreement with Barcelona in January. That much has been mentioned in the media. But I want to know your thoughts on this one. So if you're watching right now, I know you're fed up with Thiago. I know you're sick about it. I'm in the same boat. We all want it to happen, but we're kind of not allowing ourselves to believe just yet because, you know, football moves quickly and this one looks like it could go down to the deadline. So, you know, keep an eye on the situation. But I want to know what your thoughts are. Are you a little bit more optimistic now that it's looking like United don't have a genuine interest in them. Bayern Munich's hand seems to have been somewhat weakened now. We spoke about Uli Honus yesterday. Uh, Oli, uh, is it Uli Honus? I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. Former president of Bayern Munich basically came out and said that Liverpool and Manchester United were blackmailing Thiago or blackmailing them with regards to Thiago and that it looks like one of the two clubs or maybe both of them are going to go into the last week of the window and put in a really low offer. I don't know. Maybe. But if it works, brilliant. If we go and we get Thiago for, I don't know, say 20, 25 million quid, happy days. But let me go over to you guys for a little bit and see how you're feeling. Uh, see the link with Wilfred Zaha today? I haven't, Pat, but I genuinely wouldn't believe Wilfred Zaha. I mean, I know Palace are willing to accept less than they were willing to excuse me, take for Wilfred Zaha. But what is he now, 27, 28 years of age, Wilfred Zaha? Very good footballer, but... I've never seen any real interest from Liverpool side with regards to him anyway. Uh, yes, Jason, there are some rumours starting to spread about Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. I will touch on them in a couple of minutes, mate. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, right, ladies and gentlemen, just before we move on, don't forget, please do hit that subscribe button, drop a like on the video as well, and keep your comments coming. Uh, Jack Green doesn't believe any of the Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain stuff. He reckons that he's going nowhere. Uh, what have we got? Just genie to sign an extension, said Chans of the Man. I don't think it's happening, said Luke, with regard to Thiago. Uh, Paul Nichols said, Genie or Thiago in the first 11 isn't a contest. Uh, is, I don't know what, what you're, where you're going with that one, Paul, mate. I don't think any of us have said it's a contest. I mean, it would be lovely if we had both of them. I mean, can we be a bit greedy? Can we dream here for a minute? It would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, and it would give us more options in midfield. And what gets me about this is when you hear the likes of Gary Neville and stuff worrying about us going and getting them, that's what makes me a bit more optimistic on this one. So, um, yeah, there you go. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, what have we got? Ryan Brewster, I'll touch on him in a moment as well. I just want to get more of your comments though on the Thiago thing. Genie doesn't score enough goals and misses too many sitters, said Joel. I'm hearing you on the goal scoring thing. 
I mean, I get you. I hear where you're coming from, but that's not really his job, though. Now, I know people think we should be getting more goals from midfield, but for that to happen, we'll be have to be playing through the midfield a lot more rather than what we do, which is usually play from wide areas. Now, I would like to see some more third-man runs from our midfielders breaking on the edge of the box. Um, maybe that's what you're going on about, but I don't think he's um, he's known for being somebody who misses a load of sitters or stuff like that. I mean, well, Holland, he certainly gets more of an attacking license than he seems to get from Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool, so... Again, Genie has shown on inter- in international duty that he is capable of getting into the box and making things happen. Uh, what have we got? Steve Boo said Oxley Chamberlain needs to go. Oxley Chamberlain so injury prone, said Elijah John 5. Um, and then Jack Green is totally different than he thinks that he's class. I'm, I love Alex Oxley Chamberlain. Um, the injury stuff is a bit frustrating. It frustrated Arsenal fans when he was there. Um, but when he's fit and he's available and he's on form, I think Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain could bring something to this team. But, if I'm being brutally honest, and I didn't really entertain this before, if the right offer came in, I don't know. Is it worth pulling the trigger on it? Now, it's all up in the air because I've not seen uh, a club put down an offer. I've not heard of a club getting an offer ready for Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. But, I don't. everybody has a price. Um... And I think, I think I could live with it if Alex Oxley Chamberlain were to be sold. I don't want it to happen because I quite frankly, I like most of our players to be honest. And um, I'm greedy. I want them all to stay. There's a few I wouldn't mind going. I've made no secret of the fact I think Shakiri should be moved on. Wilson, I don't think will make it at Liverpool. And there's a few other bits and pieces as well. But look, let's keep going anyway. We'll get through more of your comments. We'll touch back on the Oxley Chamberlain thing later on, and we'll go and talk about Ree and Brewster as well. Uh, also, a little bit of news. Liverpool's under-21 left-back Tony Gallagher has agreed a loan deal with MLS side Toronto FC until the end of December, subject to international clearance. So best of luck to Tony. Hope that works out for him. And I guarantee you, I'll be keeping an eye on Tony because I do watch the MLS. So best of luck to him with that. Hope it goes well for him. Uh, well, Gini also scored at Newcastle, but he was playing as an attacking midfielder, said Escapado. Uh, Johnny D said Oxley chamberlain brings goals from the midfield. And he does. And apart from that, I always talk about the dynamism that you get from Alex Oxley chamberlain Those direct runs to the box. And he's not afraid to have a pop, which I think we're, we're not greedy enough at times from outside the box for me. I'd like to, to see us having a few more shots now. Not prime Felipe Coutinho amount of shots. You mean shooting from all over the place and, you know, one out of every ten pings in the top corner. But, you know, Hendo had a strike from the edge of the box. That's the type of thing I'm talking about. We need to be getting more players making those late runs. And when Alex, or excuse me, when... Uh, when um, uh, Craig, get your shit together when Trent Alexander-Arnold and when Rob are banging down left-hand side and right-hand side sometimes we play the ball right across the six-yard box but it would be nice to have Hendo or Genie or somebody making a break to the edge of the box so everybody's sucked into the six-yard box and we pull it back from the byline for a change but look, it's a bit difficult again being critiquing or giving, any, uh, giving out about our full-backs who are two of the best in the business particularly when it comes to assists uh, this Thiago talk is getting rather tiresome. You're, you're not going to get any disagreement from me, mate. I'm sick to death of it. But I have to talk about it because each day there's a little something new. But I'm with you all. I'm fed up in my arse talking about Thiago. I just wish we needed to know one way or the other what was happening so we could move on and look at maybe the wide forward position, look at the centre-back position and start talking about the Chelsea game moving forward. Uh, just an update on the Chelsea game. As things stand, it's 1-0 to Chelsea, a penalty for Jorginho. Just as we stand, as we're going live now, that's the current score. Uh, what have we got? Thiago played 38 games plus last season. Yeah, I mentioned this a few times as well. A lot of people are going to keep saying Thiago's injury prone, he's injury prone. He is, but he still managed a fair amount of games and he did play over 35 for Bayern Munich last season. So, you know, there is that. And that's probably the amount of games we'd be looking to get out of him because if he came in, we'd be rotating that midfield. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's probably where we're looking. 35, 40 games from players are probably realistic in the 60, 65 that we're going to have throughout the season. Uh, Grime Warrior, how are you, buddy? Welcome in. Craig, I was sent home from high school because someone in my class tested positive. Uh, well, look, follow the guidelines, mate. Do what you're told to do. There was actually, while well, we're talking about that, in the latest round of Premier League testing, and shout out to Mark for giving me this information, um, there was four positive tests in the last round of Premier League testing. So don't know where they are, don't know what clubs they are, 
of course, these things are medical records, so a lot of it will be kept under wraps. But whoever they are, whether they're staff members or players, I hope that they're all okay and I wish them a speedy recovery. They will, of course, now have to go into isolation for 10 days rather than the 14. That has been changed as well, the guidelines to how long people need to isolate. Uh, all right, do you think City will sign Koulibaly? I think there's a chance. I think there's a chance. Napoli are certainly open to selling Koulibaly for the right money. Um, and I have to say, I haven't really been following this one too much because I despise all things Manchester City and the less I even have to look into them, the happier I am in life. So uh, it could happen. Let's put it that way. Sorry, you need to have a drink of water. Uh, football is definitely getting more than life now to some people. Football to me, mate, is so important to my life. It uh, keeps me entertained. And look, the Reds are, if the Reds lose my weekends out the window, that's basically what I'm saying. A little bit about Ray and Brewster now and Craig's bragging is going to carry on a little bit here, I'm afraid. So bear with me. Uh, the Sheffield's, Sheffield Star have reported that Sheffield United manager Chris Wilder has presented a detailed development programme in a bid to secure Ray and Brewster on loan for the season. Uh, it also goes on to say exactly what I've been saying for weeks here on the channel, that uh, Chris Wilder hopes that the similar Preston style that Sheffield United play with will be enough to tempt Kloppo into loan and Ryan Brewster there. Um, I've been saying this for a while on the channel. I never felt like a sale was was warranted for, from Ryan Brewster's point of view. Um, and Chris Wilder, I've said all along, does play a similar style to Klopp. Klopp admires the way Wilder sets up his team. And if this plan that Wilder has put together, this detailed development plan, is something that Jurgen Klopp likes... Then we may well see Ray and Brewster on loan at Sheffield United for the season, which I think would be a fantastic move. I think it's the right move for him, and I'd love to see how he gets on in the Premier League. And then we can make a real assessment on whether Ray will make it at Liverpool. And I think he's going to do a good job. I think he's going to go there if he goes to Sheffield United. And I think he'll get goals. And I think that we'll all be rubbing our hands together, looking forward to getting Ray and back. Uh, do you think if Salah did not play versus Leeds, Liverpool would have lost? It's a very... I, don't, I can't give... All I can do is speculate, mate. None of us will know. Uh, he did play, though. He did bag himself a hat-trick. He did score for the fourth successive season in a row on the opening day. Uh, so, fair play to Mo. Kev Tucker, welcome to Anfield Agenda FC, buddy. Thank you very much. Welcome to the family. And make sure that you go onto the community tab of the Anfield Agenda YouTube page and check out the link to our Discord group, buddy. Love to see you in there. What else we got? For Rizzo Romano said it's very, very slim of City getting Koulibaly because of the Jorginho saga. Yeah, th there is that to it as well. Uh, different manager at the time, though, obviously. But yeah, no, it's a fair point. Um, but money talks. Do you know what I mean? Money talks at the end of the day. And Koulibaly's, what, 20... Was he 29, 28 years of age? Something like that. 28, 29 years of age. So um, they might be looking to refresh and Napoli are a club that are in transition at the minute if we're being honest. Just keep an eye on this Chelsea game here, just see if there's any updates for you. Nope, 39 minutes gone, still 1-0 to Chelsea. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Anything about Dakar? Uh, nothing other than what I touched on last night to let you guys know that Spurs are in the market for a forward. Jose Mourinho has made no secret of that fact. Uh, Freddie Canude represents Pats and Dakar, so there is that link there to Spurs, obviously his former club. But what I've read from his agent suggested that Dakar is going to stay at Salzburg until at least January anyway. So um, again, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that one. But the links from Liverpool to Dakar seem to have gone relatively quiet. I think the plan was to monitor him for one more season before making any decision on whether the, the club go out there and put a bid in for the guy. It's always very easy to get a little bit carried away when we play against somebody, particularly when he scores against us. Uh, so again, just keep an eye on that situation. Um, I want to agree with Paul Merson on something, by the way. And I found myself saying this far too often lately um, for my liking. He said something that I've been saying for a while. The likes of Manchester United, Manchester City and that. How are none of them knocking down the door to try and sign Harry Kane from Spurs? I'll never understand that. I think there's not enough shithousery in the Premier League these days. Even if they don't want to get him, just bang a bit in there just to annoy Mourinho a little bit more. Um, I just don't think there's enough shithousery in the Premier League these days. Right, loads more to keep getting through, ladies and gentlemen, so do keep your comments coming. 
Uh, so, bit a bit of more bad news on the financial front, I'm afraid, and I don't like to be the bearer of bad news, but I want to give you guys all the information I can. The Telegraph have reported that Liverpool are set to lose out more than any other club in regards to the television uh, company's rebate that we spoke about. Now, that was put off this season, I think, to allow clubs to at least get through what, what they're going through, but... That rebate still has to be paid. So over the next two seasons, the money that we're going to lose out on equates to around £17.3 million. Uh, we were due to earn £161.1 million, but that will now be £143.8 million. Um, again, not something that really affects us too much this season, but it is something that the club will have to look at going forward. But then again... If the club get fans back inside the stadiums, you know, that loss will be... It'll be a loss, but it'll be a loss that'll be a little bit easier to take. Any news on Upper Meccano? Nope. Absolutely nothing that I've seen, mate. Um, I'm intrigued to see... I'm intrigued to see where we go with this centre-back situation. I mean, early in the window, Mondi from Betis was there. Diego Carlos was highlighted. as somebody as well that Manchester City were looking at. Um, so if they don't get Koulibaly, they may well turn to Sevilla's Diego Carlos who is available um, for less than his bio clause. I think his bio clause is about 75 million, something like that. Who is Jeremy Doku? Uh, Jeremy Doku is an Anderlecht winger, I believe, if my memory serves me correct. I only really found out about Doku over the past week, who we've been linked with. And there was talk that we'd put in, I think it was a £27 million pound bid, something like that, and that we were going to loan him straight back to Anderlecht. So... That's all I really have for you on that one. Actually, I don't even know if he is Belgian. I just know he plays for Anderlecht. Sorry. Um, that's, that's about all I have for you with regards to, to Jeremy Doku. But we spoke about him the other night in the stream. I'd be flabbergasted if Liverpool go out and buy somebody and then loan them straight back at a time where we need to bring in a forward. Now, we did look at this kid. I think he's 18 years of age, if my memory's right. And we did look at him when we were, uh, I think, about a year and a half, two years ago, we started tracking this guy. But... Again, I'd be baffled to see Liverpool go down and whack £27 million in a time where we're struggling to, to get money together and then loan a player straight back out. Uh, I don't think Mbappe will suit a club like Liverpool, said Johnny D. I can never realistically see Kylian Mbappe coming to Liverpool. There was the talk that he asked uh, PSG to let him go at the end of the season, but I read just before we came on that Paris Saint-Germain are hoping to talk to himself and Neymar and convince them of the project ahead and that they can win the European Cup, which is what Kylian Mbappe wants to do. Personally, I think he'll end up at Real Madrid with, uh, with Zinedine Zidane. That, that looks like the way this one will play out to me down the line. Uh, what else have we got? Let me just tell my family to let the dog back in. I can hear the poor little lad crying in the back garden. and uh, I don't like to hear him upset. Uh, Thiago Saga is frustrating. It definitely is, Finn. No disagreeing with you. Do I honestly think Thiago was coming, said Billy Reid. I'm on the fence, Billy. I'm genuinely on the fence, mate. Um, when I heard that the genie held positive talks with Kloppo when he came back from international duty and told Kloppo that he wanted to stay, my initial instinct was Thiago ain't happening. But, but I don't... There's, some, there's just something about this where I don't like the idea... Of Jurgen Klopp leaving another player high and dry. And I don't think Jurgen Klopp likes the idea of that. We've also heard Didi Hamann come out and say that he's convinced that Thiago will be a Liverpool player by the end of the window. So I don't know is the honest answer. I'm on the fence. Um, again, I know some people think it's, it's dead. And I absolutely understand why you would think that way. And then I know some people are still holding out hope that it gets done. Um, what I don't understand is why we're letting it drag out so long. It's, it's just not a good look. You, you just go in. If you're going to put in a bid for the player, put in the bid. We'll move on our players. If we don't move them on, what are we doing realistically? 30 million quid? We can afford that. Well, surely we can afford that. Don't, sorry, don't get me worked up on the whole thing again. Because it just get it just goes into this vicious circle of all of us sitting here worrying how the club can't come up with 30 million quid. Um, but look, the window, another day has gone in the transfer window. So we're another day closer to finding out what our squad will be on October the 5th when the window shuts closed. What's my doggo's name? Gizmo. My dog's name is Gizmo. He has a small little guy with little ears that prick up every so often and he's a cute little son of a bitch. He's uh, 10 years of age now, but yes, my dog's name is Gizmo. He's a little West Highland Terrier, Scottish Terrier cross and uh, he's a mad little fucker. I'd rather have Haaland over Mbappe, said Rodders. 
Yeah, I mean, Haaland looks like another absolute superstar in the making. He'll stay at Dortmund for the time being. Um, Jude Bellingham scored for Dortmund tonight, by the way. They're playing in the German Cup. Uh, Sancho opened the score, and Jude Bellingham then scored. And then the last I checked, it was 3-0. There was a penalty from Thorgan Hazard. But Jude Bellingham, another young English player who's gone over there to, to Borussia Dortmund, and he seems to have hit the ground running. So, fair play to him. I do love the way English young English players now are taking that risk and going over there uh, to Europe to try to prove themselves. Obviously, we've seen with Ben Woodburn, he's going to be going over to Holland for the season on loan to try and establish himself over there. And then, again, we spoke about that young Liverpool player, Tony Gallagher, earlier on, who's gone over and joined an MLS side, Toronto FC, for the uh, until December, I should say. Excuse me. Uh, your dog's called Scruff. There you go. Uh, Origi could be moving to Turkey. Interesting, Eddie. Now, I had this this whole Origi window has been weird. I mean, he was uh, invisible during the, the pre-season training camp in Austria. Then we already had an injury. We also heard other rumours that, you know, you guys know about, but I'm not going to say. Um, and it it's a weird one because he signed a new contract with us when he could have walked. He could have left the club for free. So, yeah, maybe maybe the, he will move on. And I have to say, I would be okay with that. I would be okay with Divock Origi moving on. But I would still think the club would want somewhere between 25 to 30 million quid for Divock. And I think he warrants that kind of a fee, if I'm being honest with you. One of the hardest things to get in football is somebody who can put the ball in the net. And he might not be at the level that we're at, but he's still at a level where he'd do a job for many clubs around Europe. And he's nowhere, not even near his peak yet, by the way, Divock. It's important to remember that. 50k not far now said Robert Durbin mate every day I'm, I'm frantically checking frantically looking hoping that we're moving that little bit closer towards the channel reaching 50k so look if you do enjoy the channel folks please do hit that subscribe button drop a like on the video and also let people know about us let people know that the channel exists let people know that we're almost night to half past eight as well um, and we've got loads more stuff loads more things coming up for you guys as well and uh, we're going to be launching we, you know we have a second channel we've spoke about this before but we've never really done anything on it we're going to be uh, doing a lot more stuff on our second channel as the season progresses we're even going to rebrand the channel and change its name can't tell you what that name will be yet so keep an eye out though because we are going to be uh, we're going to be expanding Anfield Agenda uh, into other stuff as well so keep an eye out for it because we've got plans ladies and gents that's all I'm saying we've got plans watching Werner playing for Chelsea Hurts at RB VLFC I'll get you, pal. I hear where you're coming from. Lalana's is injured. Shock horror. Shock horror. Nah, sincerely though, I do wish Lalana well. Um, I know but respect for the man. I mean, his time at Liverpool, he was an ultimate professional. Did some amazing stuff around the community and some great charity work as well. Um, and he was an important part of our squad when Kloppo came in. So look, I've got nothing but love and respect for Adam Lalana, and I hope that the injury isn't serious. And I hope he's back playing for Brighton ASAP. Uh, Origi is simply not at the level of us all, said Shea Trainer. Yeah, it's tough, Shea, isn't it? Because he scored some really vital, important goals for Liverpool. Big, big, big goals. Champions League final, semi finals away at Newcastle. That wonderful goal that will forever live in my memory against Everton as well. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough, but football's a ruthless business. And if the right money comes in from then, then we move on. We move, as you young people say. Right, what have we got? It's heading towards half time there in the Brighton Chelsea game, and it's still 1 0 to Chelsea. Hopefully not. I think it'll be long injuries to Joe Wickham. Don't know what that's about. I don't get why it doesn't seem like anyone is trying to get Kane anywhere. Same. I mean, same. I'm absolutely baffled by this because right now Kane looks like somebody who's... I'm sure he loves Spurs. I've no doubt about that. But he's looking like somebody who's a little bit frustrated there. And I think he could be ripe for the pick if somebody had the cojones to put a big chunk of cash down on the table. Right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do 10 or 15 minutes of your comments to finish up tonight because I've pretty much gone through everything that I have to talk about with regards to transfers, with regards to other news around the club as well. And, and anything else would be just waffle for me, if I'm being quite frank with you. So let's do another 10 or 15 minutes. It's half time in the Chelsea game anyway. So what are you going to be doing? Do you know what I mean? Stay here with our Uncle Craig and, and we'll talk footy. Just subscribe to the second channel, said Football Talks. Thank you, buddy. Really appreciate that one. Uh, we need Mbappe, said Kevin. Kane's injury prone. Look, I don't want Kane at Liverpool. Let me get that out there straight away. I don't think he'd suit our style. And yes, he is injury prone. And he does tend to pick up these injuries at important points of the season for Spurs. Um, but that Spurs team looked absolutely horrendous against Everton. Um, 
Again, pains me to say this. Everton looked quite tidy. They looked like they knew what they were doing against the Spurs team who looked very lethargic and a little bit clueless. What the hell has happened to Deli Ali, by the way? He seems to have just completely fallen off a cliff. Uh, Bernadette said, Guys, I've had a text. Ryanair are announcing ridiculous costs for tickets tomorrow. Last time they were £10 return. Liverpool, Dublin and vice versa. Just giving you a heads up. There you go. Anybody wants a cheap flight? Have a little look-see. Thank you, Bernadette, for the update. Uh, obviously, I'll be staying right here where I am because Craig is cocooned inside his gaff and won't be going anywhere. We need to step up a defence against Chelsea. Might offer Rigi plus cash for Koulibaly. We're not getting Koulibaly. You can forget about it. Liverpool are not signing Koulibaly. So, dreaming about Origi or anybody else going as part of a deal is not going to happen. We are not going to sign Koulibaly. Just, just, just forget about it. Just bury it. It's not happening. Um, yeah, it's not realistic either. Prometheus just subscribed to the second channel as well. Well in, but it will be renamed. So don't get a shock when you look through your subscribe list and go, hang on, I'm not subscribed to... Yeah, see, I'm not giving you the name yet. Uh, Sturridge has got against Everton better than Origi's, said Robert Durbin. Ah, Origi's, man. It had everything. So what I mean, I had Van Dijk turn at his back thinking he'd mess the shot. I had little Jordan Pickford making a hames of it. I had Kloppo and Allison hugging on the pitch. I had Everton fans losing their mind everywhere. I had it all. It was beautiful. Uh, we should buy Thiago 100%. We need to fight for a shirt, said Logan. Look, I want Thiago. You want Thiago. We all want Thiago. But we're going to have to just wait it out and see what happens. The window's getting closer to closing. We're one day closer to October the 5th, as I said earlier. So, right, questions. Let's get them going, folks. Give me what, what have you got for me? What do you want to know? What have you got to ask? Matip should start against Chelsea, said Jan's other man. Potentially, I'm got. I'm t the reason I thought that through was I was thinking to myself about Olivier Giroud. Olivier Giroud, if Chelsea play him, is a danger in the air. We know that he's a pain in the backside. So uh, Matip's certainly better in the air than Joe Gomez. So I can understand the call for it. And um, if they're purely just because Joe Gomez had a bad game, then I'm not so sure. But from a tactical perspective, maybe it is worth giving Joe Matip a go against Chelsea. It's going to be a very difficult game, by the way. The first. I say the first big test Leeds game was a real game, but the first one you're looking at in the season and thinking, right, we need to see the real Liverpool in this game. Please do show up. And I think Salah is chomping at the bit. I think Sadio Mane will want to get a goal as well. And I'm really intrigued to see how quickly we can get at Chelsea because this Chelsea team is still gelling, still developing, still getting to know each other, whereas the Reds know their jobs. They know what they're about. Um, and I'm hopeful of a good result at Stamford Bridge at the weekend. We will slap Chelsea, said ST Boy 65. Thiago will look good in the Liverpool jersey, said Prometheus. Uh, Clifford Healy just said, bruh. Bruh. Uh, I want Thiago and Oba. Well, you're not getting a Bamiyan because it's, you know what I mean, looking like he's going to sign that new deal with Arsenal. Um, I wonder will he get Meza Ozil kind of money though. That's what I'm interested to see. Uh, will said Gomez was good at the weekend. Mm-mm. He wasn't, mate. He wasn't. Um, he wasn't awful, but he certainly wasn't good. I mean, that first goal. What? What the hell were him and Trent at? I'm still baffled by that one. Uh, right. What else have we got? Could be a lot of goals. Liverpool versus Chelsea game to Elijah John five. What do you think of Robertson? Robertson's book. I haven't read it, obviously, but. Um, yeah, Robbo put a book out there. Hope it sells well, but I haven't read it yet. I am in the middle of reading Paul Tompkins' latest book, Perch, by the way, which I can highly recommend. And Paul will be coming on the channel for an interview as soon as I get this book read and we can arrange it, which is, you know, the most exciting thing to happen to me since this channel has begun um, over two years ago. Paul Tompkins, to me, is, is the foremost mind with regards to Liverpool, and I cannot wait to get him on for a chat. The only problem is um, I won't want to let him leave because I'll have so many questions for the man. Right, CM Butterbell said, Craig, I'm losing it. The thought of Thiago playing for one of our rivals is making me sick. I don't really think you have to worry about it too much with regards to a rival. I'm thinking, from my own perspective, if he doesn't end up at Liverpool, it'll be Barca or staying at Bayern. I mean, it was spoken about today, earlier on in the stream, that United don't seem to have a genuine interest in it. And, and the guy that is the chief Manchester United football correspondent for the Manchester Evening News came out, and I'll give you his exact quotations now, one second. Just want to make... Because people will be coming a little bit late. And I just want to go back over this with regards to Thiago. 
Uh, he said, Manchester United have no intention of moving for the Bayern Munich midfielder Thiago Alcantara and are convinced his representatives and Bayern are using their name to pull pressure on Liverpool to make a bid. So I don't really think you have too much to worry about with regards to Thiago going elsewhere. Um, you know, there was some talk at one point maybe about a little reunion with Pep Guardiola at Manchester City, but there's a couple of things that would make me think that that's probably not plausible. One, Guardiola was only signed on for this season at City, I believe. So, again, Thiago doesn't know that there's a future there with that manager at the club. And secondly, the relationship, whilst I don't think it was frosty when they finished up at Bayern Munich together, I don't think it was quite as good as when Pep said when he got to Bayern Munich, Thiago or nobody. I think the relationship, I don't want to say soured, but it wasn't quite as, as strong as it was when their time together finished up, I think. Right, more of your questions. Uh, Craig, a few weeks ago, you're almost positive we were getting Thiago. Do you still feel the same? I always said, Dan, that it was... I think Thiago and Gini were linked. I've said that all along, along with, obviously, Barcelona moving on a midfielder. Now, it looked like we were going to lose Gini when he had to Barcelona. At least that's what was being put out there in the media. So, if Gini stays, which it looks like he does, I'm on the fence with regards to Thiago. I think it's 50-50. Although, as I said to you, and again, this kind of means nothing, but Sky Bear have uh, suspended betting on, on Liverpool signing Thiago. But, you know, that happens a lot. So, again, don't take that as a guarantee. Uh, what do you think about the Zachariah links or Zachariah links? Again, Louis, you're going to have to tell me who this dude is because, you know, I don't claim to be a mastermind of European talent, buddy, so you'll have to let me know. Um, right, what else have we got? I think I missed a couple of comments from Mr. Morrissey as well, Brian. Sorry, mate. I've uh, seen your name, meant to read your comment, and then forgot it, so <laughs> my bad. There he is. Uh, he said, no, nope, he's just responded to somebody. Uh, and I agree with Brian as well, by the way, here. Do not tell anyone to pay for Super Chats to get mentioned. I, I fully agree with Brian on that one. Um, if people want a Super Chat, that is entirely up to them and there is no pressure. I try and, and do a mix. I try and read comments that are Super Chats, some members' comments as well, some moderators' comments, and I try and read some normal comments. But yes, no financial pressure from us on anybody whatsoever. We just want you guys to watch and we want you to enjoy what you're doing here. And um, What I do want you to do though, and it's completely free, is check out the Flick app. I've been banging on about this for the last couple of weeks. It's something that we launched this season, something that we, we use instead of Discord because it's a lot more fun. We've got polls up on there asking you what position you think we need to strengthen. We've got a prediction table for a lot of Premier League games as well. You get asked five questions, you get a point for each one you get right. And then we've got a leaderboard there that we're going to be giving a prize at the end of the season to whoever's top of that leaderboard along with loads of other bits and pieces as well uh, as promised i've answered every single dm that's been sent to me on there and i'll continue to do so so if you are new to the flick chat app hit me up on it send me a message say hello let me know where in the world you're watching uh, and i promise i'll get back to you uh, the, the flick chat app's completely free by the way but if you do want to do us a favor on there you can give us a tip without having to put your hand in your pocket. Uh, there's this cool little thing on there. Everybody gets two free cheer emojis, they're called, the cheer pixels. It's a little dude with a uh, cartoon sunglasses on. When you're in the chat, you'll see him in the bottom right-hand corner. If you click on that, you'll see a load of cheer emojis. They're emojis, but they're called cheer pixels. Um, you can get you get two of them for free that you can only use basically to tip us with, and we get 25p for each one that you use. So it's a free way of us getting some money and you guys helping us out, as well as a cool app that's free to use. There's no ads on there. There's no pressure to buy anything, nothing like that. Um, it's suitable for younger people as well, by the way, if you're a parent who's wondering if the, if the, the chats are suitable. I, I'll make sure that we keep an eye on it. We've got a group of moderators on there as well. Um, and again, anything, any bullying around like that, people will be just booted out straight away. So, yeah, there is a link in the description, or you can get it from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. But it helps us out massively if you do use the link in our description and come join our Flick Chat group. So, hope to see you there. I'll be on there later on this evening as well. Uh, right, I'll take a couple more questions before we finish up. Why have we done so little business this summer? asks Adrian Daniel. I think it's a mixture, mate, of us being cautious and obviously you know the financial situation that the club finds itself in with regards to being a club that spends what we take in and um, we did have the reverse of the the furloughing of the staff which i think was a ridiculous decision to do in the first place and i absolutely agree with the reversal of it but we don't have match day revenue and stuff but i did get a little i got dropped a message from somebody earlier on to say that uh they have a friend who works in, in nike i think you said it was in holland um and the Liverpool shirts are flying off the shelf. So it's looking like 
another very good decision by the club to go at night to take that 20% of merchandise sales uh, and the projections seem to be somewhere 70 80 million pound maybe over the course of the season with this deal with Nike so you know again just I'm just trying to explain the finances as well as I could but if you want in-depth analysis on the finances the Swiss Ramble on Twitter did a brilliant thread on exactly where Liverpool stand right now financially you know this guy is uh, far more qualified than I, I could ever pretend to be knows exactly what he's on about and it's a brilliant thread um, but it's, it's heavy reading I want to give you that heads up where does Minamino fit in Craig look good in pre-season to them bro uh, he fits in either in my mind I, I've always pictured him as in a, just behind the front three. But we've seen him used through the centre and we've seen him used in a wide position as well. Therein lies the beauty, I suppose, of the player. Another player that's versatile to Klopp that he can play across the front three or in an attack and midfield position. Uh, and I agree, he did look brilliant in pre-season and he will get minutes. Don't worry about that. I thought he was actually going to play the first game. Um, I, I think at that, at that price tag, he's going to look like a ridiculously good deal moving forward, like 7.25 million quid. But yeah, he, f- he fits into rotation, is what I'd pretty much say. Uh, if Origi had the same game time as a Bamiyang, he'd be just as good. I would disagree with that, but it is all about opinions. And, you know, we may well know if he goes elsewhere, if he's as good as a Bamiyang. How many penalties did Liverpool get last season? I don't know. But it was a lot less than Manchester United, that much I can say. I mean, I don't have the information off the top of my head. Uh, Nike or Nike, said Matthew. I know, and I switch in between, buddy. I think it is Nike. I think that's the right way of saying it, but I do flop around a little bit. Same with Adidas and Adidas. I say them both differently depending on what way I structure the sentence. Uh, Craig, how will you feel if we finish the transfer window as it is right now? (sighs) Frustrated, Shay. I'm not going to lie. I want a wide forward. Um... I'm not as fussed on a centre-back situation as I probably should be. Um, I do think we need a fourth centre-back. I'm, I'm not going to deny that fact. But, I mean, if I was, if I think we need where we need to spend money, we need a wide forward to put pressure on the front three. Um, and look, if Thiago happens, that's great. But if, if we... James Pearce said the club are looking to get two more in. Now, James Pearce... I know people think different things. Some people think James Pearce is gospel. Some people think he isn't. I really like James Pearce. I think he's as honest as the day is long and I don't think he ever tries to fool anybody. So he said that Liverpool are still looking to get one or two deals done before the window closes. He said a wide forward and a centre-back. Didn't go into any detail. Did say that we might have to partly fund that by sales. And you can ask him yourself though because James Pearce is going to be on the channel next week. So you'll be able to ask him yourself when we get James on for a conversation. Ben White signed a new contract. Yes, he did. He signed for Brighton. He was on loan at Leeds for a couple of seasons. Gone back. Uh, Potter, the manager at Brighton, really likes him, really rates him. But don't rule out Liverpool making a move for Ben White maybe a year down the line because we're certainly tracking this kid because he is the real deal. Uh, penalty against Leicester last minute was one penalty that was important to Pat. Yeah, it really was, mate. Um, we spoke about this, actually. It's weird because when Jimmy Milner steps up to take a penalty, I'm convinced it's going in. No doubt in my mind whatsoever. Um, I can only think of one penalty that he's missed against uh, Fraser Foster that time when he was kicking up the penalty spot. But weirdly, when Mohamed Salah steps up, I get a bit nervous. And I shouldn't because he keeps scoring them. Liverpool are winning the treble. There you go. I love that, mate. Uh, Sabarineth, I hope I pronounced that correctly. He said Liverpool are winning the treble. Well in, mate. I can get aboard that train. Right, look, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call that one a night. I will see you guys tomorrow for a late night agenda. I'm going to go watch the second half of the Chelsea game to see what all this fuss is about and see what we're missing with Werner and, Werner and Havertz. Excuse me. I'll be back tomorrow, as I said. Make sure to drop a like on the video. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Again, if you want to become a member, hit the blue join button or have a look in the description. But most importantly, I hope to see you on that Flick Chat app. It is free. We've got over 420 people on there at the minute. Love to push that up to 500. What have we got to lose out on? It's completely free if you don't like it delete the app so what i mean thank you very much for your time folks i hope you're well i'll see you tomorrow i'm sure we'll be talking about tiago again and i'm sure there'll be another few bits and pieces enjoy your evening and as always love to you all and up the reds